show. We just give you all the praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown? Yeah, I just made everybody stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Sear. Here. Commissioner Heavy Wright. Here. Commissioner Hughes. Here. Commissioner Laring. Here. Vice Chair Nash. Here. Commissioner Pago. She's excused. She'll be here in a few minutes. Chair Skolnick. Here. Commissioner Wilkins. She's excused. Seven present. Thank you. All right, uh, the next item is the approval of the agenda, but before we approve the agenda, um, item 10, um, I'm going to have uh, the administrator speak to that because that could affect what happens. Thank you. Um, we have our architects uh, going to drive out to uh, show the, uh, their drawings at 4.30 or 5 today. Uh, but I've heard from several commissioners who've been there already to look at the airport and the roof and how they're going to change the looks of the road, look of the, uh, to the public. Um, so we had a time slot actually today at 4 or 5 to be able to get here to go out and look at that. But I've heard from several of them that they're not uh, have time to go today. So I was going to make sure that there were a few who were going to go. If not, I'll just go ahead and have Mr. Lucan's cancel the tour today at 4.30. So I really need to show of hands who were planning on going out there after work. I have already seen them. I two. So we got four plus possibly two more. So Bob, we'll go ahead and have the tour. Thank you. Okay. Um, I need uh, a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion that's been supported. Any comments or corrections on that? If not, we'll just do a voice vote on that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. That's approved. Next is the approval of the minutes of September 30th, 2021, the regular and closed session. So moved. Okay, we have a motion, support, support. Okay, we have a motion that's been supported. Any um, comments or corrections, anything on that? If not, we'll do a voice vote again. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, those are approved. We now have a uh, time set aside for public comment on an agenda item. Anybody there? Is there anybody online? Uh, Ann Darwin raised her hand. I'm sorry, Chris. Ann Darwin. Yes, we have Ann Darwin. Okay. Um, Ann, uh, we have <clears throat> public comment. You're up. She's unmuted now. You can you can talk now, Ann. Okay, Ann, go ahead. Ann Darwin. Um, Ann, one more one more chance. You can we can see you're unmuted. If you are there, now's your opportunity to speak for public comment. Okay, she's not responding. Um, maybe another chant uh, at the end. And if, if you can hear, but you're not, your um, audio isn't working. Then we'll move on. Um, we'll move on to committee and board reports. Um, actually, I'm going to move these around until um, Commissioner Taylor gets here. Uh, we'll, we'll start with uh, human services. Commissioner <coughs> I'll just do it from here. Um, the uh, Human Services Committee met on October 5th, 2021, and I recommend, uh, and, and it was re recommended, and I move HS 21-10-25 to accept the agreement for expansion services <coughs> by uh, Michigan State University Extension Forum, fiscal year 
22 uh, programs and services with no changes in general fund allocation and authorize the board chair to sign. And HS 21 slash 10 dash 26 to approve additional funding for fiscal year 21 and the amount, this is 21, not 22, the amount of $5,292.36 for Orchard View Community Ed for senior activities and to authorize the designated senior millage grants administrator senior resources to proceed with the administration of the programs. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion, any comments or concerns? Okay, we'll move ahead with the roll call, please. Commissioner Brown? Yes, on both. Commissioner Sear? Yes, on both. Commissioner Heavy Wright? Yes, on both. Commissioner Hughes? Yes, on both. Commissioner Laring? Yes, on both. Vice Chair Nash? Yes, on both. Chair Skolnick? Yes, on both. Seven yes, on both. Okay. And is that complete? Oh, I'm sorry, and that completes my report. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, next, we'll do ways and means. Commissioner Chair, Chair of that committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Ways and Means Committee met on October 5th, 2021, and it was recommended, and I move on items WM21 10 105, 106, 107, 108, and 109. Sorry. Okay. Um, are there any comments, any concerns with any of these motions? If not, we'll do a roll call on that one too, please. Commissioner Sear? Uh, yes on all. Commissioner Heavy Wright? Yes on all. Commissioner Hughes? Yes on all. Commissioner Laring? No on one or eight, yes on the rest. Vice Chair Nash? Yes, I know. Mr. Pago? Can you come back to me? Mr. Brown? Yes, I know. Mr. Pago? Um, no on 105. Yes on 106. Yes on 107. And um, no one, one, oh, eight. And yes, I'm one, oh, nine. Chair Skolnick? Yes, I'm one. Eight, yes. No, I'm sorry. Seven, yes. One, no, one, five. Eight, yes, and one, oh, six. Eight, yes, and one, oh, seven. Six, yes. Two, no, and one, oh, eight. Eight, yes, and 109. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Chair. Um, Commissioner Pago, we're, we're ready for you. Okay. Uh, Chair of Public Safety. Commissioner Pago, before you start on 109, we have a draft to the board to consider. Um, we have questions on it yet. So I'll hand that out as you go through there. But, um, on, one, on Ways and Means 109? Yes. No, Public Safety. Okay, you're looking at the wrong number. Okay. So CPS, which number? Leave 57 out. 57, leave it out. So we'll okay. It. All right. The Courts and Public Safety Committee uh, meeting met on October 5th, 2021, was recommended, and I move CPS 21 slash 10 dash 54 through CPS 21 dash 10 or slash 10 dash 56. Support. All right, we have um, <laughs> items 54, 55, and 56 uh, are, have been moved and supported. Are there any questions, any comments on those three motions? If not, we'll do a roll call on those. Commissioner Heavy Wright? Yes, on all. Commissioner Hughes? Yes, on all. Commissioner Laring? Yes, on all. Vice Chair Nash? Yes, I'm on. Commissioner Pago? Yes, I'm on. Commissioner Brown? Yes, I'm on. Commissioner Sear? Yes, I'm on. Eight yes on 54, 55, and 56. Uh, 
Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Pegel. Um, so on item 57, right? Yep. Yeah, item 57, I just handed out a draft flag uh, policy, corporate council. <coughs> our staff took stand at this to uh, make sure it's included with the flags on flagpoles. But the question came up on banners. Uh, banners might hit. Um, hang off of a building or banners that might hang off at the airport. When you get at the airport today, you'll notice there's several banners hanging down right where people are coming to the building. The fairgrounds have banners during the fair and uh, look at Bob, the one, Harry's Landing, Irish Fest, for example, things, banners slash flags. So we were, at least I was starting on how do we include Banners that yet not affect <coughs> departments that use that for revenue um, while they're uh, holding events. I, I would, yeah, I would, I would recommend that we have something that says during uh, a scheduled event, uh, individual flags representing that event can be flown. Like if it's those days or you know. Whatever. I mean, during that event, if it's five days long, they can fly that flag to five days. If it's Irish first, they can fly the Irish flag. If it's Jewish first, they can, you know, whatever, whatever it is, during those five days, they can fly that. I, I think that, that this policy kind of clarifies that, you know, it's just flags on flagpoles and banners are a totally different issue. Well, actually, um, it was just drafted by me. Um, we tried to address whether, as, as Mark said, this applies just to flags or to banners or other things that aren't on a flagpole but are on a building. Um, so at least in this draft, which again is just for discussion, it would be broader than that. Um, actually, it might not be in this. I'm not sure this is the last version. It says include the official no, banner. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. One option would be to um, to define flag to include banners, but that's where you have to get into dealing with signs and banners at the airport, um, yeah. the park, and things like that. So that if it's strictly it. flags on flagpoles, yeah. then that wouldn't apply to a banner on a building. I think that makes it much simpler. Well, Okay. Yes. So what is the difference between a flag and a banner? I mean, you can have a, a banner could be hung from a flagpole that's mounted to the side of the building, and then it's not a flag, it's a banner. Is that what you're saying? That's what the county would need to decide <clears throat> what you want to regulate with this. Is it a freestanding flagpole? Does it include things attached to a building? Does it include any banner on any kind of structure or facility? Because as the county regulating its own speech, you can decide what you want it to cover. In that, in that, in that, can I speak in that, in, in that situation, then I would recommend that we just limit it to these flags that we have listed here, one through four, on any county property at any time, whether it's from a flagpole or from a building, and have a uh, special use permit if there's somebody that comes in. Bob can handle that when they come in and book a, uh, an event. If there's something at Heritage Landing or the airport or something, if the airport has something that they'd like to fly, they can bring it before the board and we'll say, you know, you can fly your United flag at the door of the airport, you know. Well, but they have special to, use permit. That sounds I like think, way too um, labor intensive for I mean, how often, any event. How often do we have an event come to town? A 10 lot. times a year? In the summer, like every weekend normally. Well, well then we, then we, and then when the, they know they're coming for three months, they can come before us when we hang our banners, yes. Um, okay, let's let's do this in an orally fashion. Does anybody else want to speak on this? Um, Commissioner Pego. I think to continue what Commissioner Hughes is talking about, when they apply for their application for their festival or their event, they could include there could be something included on right. that um, in regards to that. But I have a question on the special use permit, like who would actually that would be the city. If it's no, else. yeah, I, no, this would be county property. But Melinda's right. That could just said, that could be included in the contract <coughs> application to you know because we approve the contracts. That could be you know put a section in there. I will be fl a flag flown. We want to take a look at. Well, it. what about at, at Heritage Landing, for example? They typically put up sponsor banners on the fence. Mm -hmm. Those aren't flags. That's a banner, not a flag. Yeah. That's a banner. The other thing we want to make sure we're talking about is the difference between the county's 
communication, the county speech, when it's the county building, the county putting something up, and when it's private parties. So one thing we might want to do is carve out an exception when it's a private party leasing county property or using county property under a license for a temporary event that these restrictions don't apply. So they can have their own flags and that's banners a, a and they don't have to come get special permission. The, the, the potential problem you run into then is if you're allowing private parties to come use the park, um, what are you allowing them to communicate speech wise? And are you then regulating the content of that speech, which we don't want to do? Hey, I mean, I could be the only two rental properties of heritage landing and fairgrounds. Yes. So I'm looking at Matt and Bob. Depot. And it, the buses on the depot too, right? The bus. I'm sorry. The depot and the buses. The buses we advertise on buses as well. But normally they're not a flag. Bob Lucas, community development director. Yes, we do have advertising on buses and bus um Bus stop enclosures. But those are more like this, the, the sponsor place that we would put up. Those are event. signs. Right, those are signs. Banners, banners, I would classify as the kind with grommets made yeah. out of vinyl that we attach to the fences or heritage landing. Yeah, that says Irish Fest sponsored by. Right, and Unity Fest and yeah. all the festivals. So we don't want to have to ask permission for those. No, no. no. That's, that's what we're saying. Let's, I'm oh, sorry. So, we're regulating whatever happens in county buildings. Right. So if uh, one of our, if somebody wants to put a banner on this building that's not allowed. Well, they can't do that. Yeah, can't, right. Nobody can put a banner without well, there's we have, we have 50 some buildings, we have 59 buildings. So, I mean, easy one, for example, is watch us go. Those are banners all over the community. Mm -hmm. right. We have that on our building. That's So this is just addressing the flags. So. This yeah, is just I flags. Think, flags yeah. that but you hang on a flag. The reason whether I bring it's it up. attached to or, or, my opinion would be, when you hang a flag on a flagpole, whether the pole is attached to the building and sticks out like a flag, or it's standing in the parking right. lot, it's a flagpole. I, I was going back to Mr. Learn's question. What defines the difference between a flag and a banner? To me, that's the difference. I think if anybody else, you know, what we could do is we could we could vote on this and then come back with another policy for banners. Or do you want to include it in this? Through? Yeah, that's pretty good. I agree. This is strictly a flag. Like a flag, flag holes, holes. Got flag. This is yeah. what the county is going to hang on county property. Right? Right. So on whether, it's like, holes. whether it's on the flagpole or on a pole that holds a flag on the building. Correct. No? Well, yeah. 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 The, the word flag is defined in this draft, and it's defined to include the official banner of a state or nation that symbolizes that state or nation by display of a symbolic piece of fabric material, typically oblong or square, attachable by one edge to a staff or a halyard and used as a symbol or emblem. So that would be a flagpole or a, a pole that holds a flag out stuck to the building, correct? Yes. Yes, that's my understanding of how we would interpret that. It would not, in my opinion, apply if you just attach a banner to the side of a building. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, yes. I just wanted to make a comment. I think that if we're going to just do this policy, let's just do the policy. I think when we start getting into the banner thing, it's turning into a whole nother, yeah. you know, we're trying to, yep. you know, keep government out of people's business. Well, right. let's, Avoid that. The banner situation hasn't been a problem. The flag situation, I think, is controversial. And we're solving that problem. So I think the rest we should just move on. If All that right. becomes a problem, we can only move on. So, I agree with Charles. Yeah. It's just situation flags. Is everyone okay with this? It's pretty yeah. open. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not uh, well, one other thing. It's possible that we will have somebody try and bypass this by creating a banner instead of a flag. And if that happens, we'll address it individually. Um, so, um, so how do I do this? It was number 57 on this agenda. Melinda, Melinda, do you want to make the most, do you want to, under your committee, this will be the new item 57? Adopt this policy. Adopt this so, policy. okay. So, do you want me to make that motion? Motion. 
Yeah, I, I recommend that we adopt CPS 21 slash 10 57 to amend the county flag policy presented to us today to amend the county flag policy to state that only the state flag, national flag, county flag, and POW flag be flown on any county property. So, okay, we have a motion that's been supported. We have the, uh, the policy in front of you. Uh, why don't we do a roll call on this one? Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Larry? Yes. Vice Chair Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Heavy Wright? Yes. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Eight yes. Okay. Um, I'm just like to make a comment on that. I think it's interesting that for the last 162 years, it was just fine. And we just said a new. No, this is, we did one before. That one's oh, we talked about it. We never adopted it. Oh, we never adopted it. Has this been talked about? We're making progress. Yes, we are. <laughs> it took us a lot of years, sir. All right, next is Chairman's report. Uh, I have nothing. Are there any committee liaison reports? Anybody like to report from any of the committees they serve on? Uh, yes, um, the day I met with uh, emergency management, um, very well attended meeting. We have several new people. We have, um, we still have quite a few um, places in the city county that have hazardous things, um, chemical plants and things like that. They were all in attendance today. Um, the one out um, BASF, the one out in Speaking Township, does not have any more chemicals out there. They're in the process of closing the doors. They do have somebody that's looking at buying that facility and taking over uh, with a new uh, product out there, but they no longer have any chemicals in their building. Um, we're aware of everything and, and we've just recently done some uh, projects out there to you know, make sure we have readiness. We do have some equipment that for some reason they, I guess there's, there is a good reason. The same with the Sheriff's Department, a lot of their stuff is gets outdated and it's not that technically it's worn out, but they're concerned about the efficiency of the apparatuses that they have for life saving for themselves and for other people. So they have to be replaced more often than we would assume they would have to be replaced. So we're in the process of replacing some of those, but Otherwise, all the municipalities are in good shape. All the um, chemical companies were there, and everybody is up to speed and doing good. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, the next item. Uh, so, we should be at the airport. You want to pick time you want us to. Well, we we have a closed session, and <laughs> so we told them four thirty, correct, right, Bob? So. Uh, allow some time for closed session to take place. Mm -hmm. I do have one other item for an update, really. Um, as the finance the director of finance, we advertised that. Um, we, we didn't get anybody that we felt was uh, qualified to our needs here at the county. Um, since then, I've been visiting with the manager of the finance director, the finance department, and we, we would like to propose a, a solution for this. Um, I'll bring that forward uh, next ways and means uh, for discussion okay. under ways and means. But I want to let you know where we're at on this and why I haven't advertised the second round yet. I think we have a good uh, solution going forward that I would like to present to the board along with Angie. Uh, next ways and means. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Um, next item is unfinished business. Does anyone have any unfinished business? In Mr. Chair, I have an item. Okay. So uh, I'd like to make a motion under unfinished business to liquidate the Humvee and the macro for the surplus property disposal policy. Let me get a second for that, please. Second. Can, can you repeat the motion? The motion is to liquidate the Humvee and the macro per the surplus property disposal policy. For the surplus, dis what is it? The motion is to liquidate the Humvee and the macro per the surplus property disposal policy. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, did somebody support that? Thank you. Okay. Any, any I do. I have a question on that. Yes. These are both something that we can get rid of. I mean, I know they were given to us, but I mean, it's not like we're in a really 
riot prone area where we need armored tanks. But is there, is there, can we, can't, do we have the ability to get one of these? Yes, we do. I have researched the policy and there is a mechanism for doing that. Okay, thank you. And I don't think our office has been asked to look at that issue because I'm not sure this went to a committee, which is what would have maybe triggered us looking at that issue. And so I haven't researched it. Yeah. Um, I'll make one comment. Is that we don't own them. So um, there probably is a return policy oh, okay. that asks the sheriff. I think this year yeah. you can explain how that works, but um, yes, it would be liquidated. Yes, um, and well, may I comment to this? Uh, right now, we're struggling with a storage location for a lot of equipment. This would free up a lot of storage space uh, for some of these boats that we currently have that need to be winterized. Currently, the airport is the only heated location for boats. And uh, this would free up a lot of that space. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, Marcia? I'd like to hear the uh, from the sheriff on <coughs> questions of that and what's the process. Uh, Michael Cullen, County Sheriff. Um, we have turned in equipment before, uh, and we just get a little bit from the government and we send it back to the RMO. It's, it's actually a pretty simple process. I mean, as far as I know, it's like the, the repercussions of this, I mean, this is uh, equipment that uh, we've used, utilized in the past. Area counties also have this equipment, and it's a life saving tool for our law enforcement officers here in Muskegon County. Um, you know, I can run back historically one more time. Uh, if you'd like to be come back in the presentation, the amount of times that we use this equipment. Um, and like I said before, I'd be more happy to. Ask. Put a motion together for us to purchase this type of equipment through the uh, civilian market. Um, but we have an opportunity, which we've taken advantage of, to have this stuff you know, free here for us. As far as that goes, you know, I guess you know. I I don't know what the next step would be here. This is uh, through the DRM and the things that we do. Um, it's we utilize this equipment through Region Six. Um, we sign up for it. Um, you know, I, I guess I'll leave it at that right now. Do you have any questions? Yeah, what other counties have military equipment like this? Uh, Kent, Mason, Nuevo, us, um, Oceana, I believe. Also, you know this. You know this was a program that was put in place to uh, give law enforcement an opportunity to get that equipment that you can't that we couldn't afford. Um, you know this was a you know, basically through a presidential order. Um, we did have our armored personnel carriers before, and the Obama administration, um, you know, just felt that you know, municipalities didn't need these types of equipment. When I say that, I'm talking about track vehicles. Um, as a result of that is when we were able to get our first max pro under the Obama administration. And then, uh, um, when President Trump was elected, um, he then turned the program back around and make it easier for law enforcement you know, agencies to get this type of equipment because it, it is expensive, um, you know, for us to purchase on the civilian market. I thought the Max Pro was just recently acquired. Yes, it was, but in August, I believe it was. Have we used it? We, well, like I had said before, the team is not operational yet. We have a conference right. board meeting this Wednesday. It will be a, an exercise we're doing with the chiefs of police in the area, and then they'll go operational after that. The other max pro that we have in was used when the team was operational. The two max pros? No, ma'am. This is the old one. The oh. past administration got rid of it. Oh, they got rid of it. Yes. Okay. I, is that anybody? I'm, I'm not sure. I, oh, yeah, Charles. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just wanted to make a comment because I, I don't think we have a storage problem, I think we've made a storage problem. This board has. And that's something that we need to get together. Um, but I do think that once we start turning back equipment that has been given to us, it's greatly going to impact us getting future equipment and how they look on the city and county. So we're probably shooting ourselves in our own foot, but we have to deal with those repercussions. And this could be one. There may be some much needed equipment that come down the road. You know, we just don't have an advantage in getting it because we're turning things back in. I, I, uh, do, a, I do a comment. You know, yes. along with Charles, Charles said, you know, it's possible too that 
turning in something like this is just really big riot stuff. Maybe they'll say, well, not everybody needs that great big stuff. Maybe we need to concentrate on the smaller stuff that they can use more every day than something that they're going to use once a year or once every five years. So maybe it could benefit us too. We, you know, we don't know how they're going to look at this, but no, I, I'd like to make a comment on this. Um, whether or not we need two of these things, I don't know. That Humvee, that's, that's armor, is that correct? Yes, sir. We, and if I may, we were able to receive the Humvee from Kent County because they purchased their second vehicle. Um, it was a small one, the two. Um, it's a good operational vehicle. It's not the most adequate for the things that we do, given its size, because it only holds four individuals. Uh, but it's we had an opportunity, and um, it was our best option at the time. Well, I just my personal opinion, uh, since we didn't pay anything for it, it's a matter of storing it, and you know, I, I see no reason to get rid of it. Um, if you used it once a year. And it say, saved somebody's life or it caused somebody, people periodically um, barricade themselves in buildings. And uh, in fact, we just had one, I think, didn't we? They were holding their family hostage. Yes. Um, it, just, it, it just seems like a good piece of equipment to have. And uh, Sheriff, do you have any idea how much a civilian piece of equipment like that costs? Um, I, I, I don't at, at the time, but I would, I would suggest somewhere between depending on the model between 500 and 800,000. I, you know, if we got rid of the, got rid of one of them, that'd be fine. I think we should keep it. I mean, we had prior to this, we had that um, armored personnel carrier that you used occasionally, but it was much harder to move. You had to move it around on a flatbed truck. Correct. So this is, this can be driven anywhere. That's yes, it's correct. Which one? No, what we have now. They're much easier to deploy because the macro can, or the max pro, yeah, because we can just drive both them there. Both yeah, oh, that, that we can just drive them there. The armored personnel carriers that Commissioner Stone was talking about, um, <laughs> we would rotate those out there. We had a flatbed trailer that we had to haul them off the scene because we just don't want to drive the tracks that far. All right, anybody else? Yes, sir. And I just wanted to add to your comment because, you know, we talk about this about not using it, and I'm glad we haven't had to really use it. But the same thing Grand Rapids used to say before they got theirs, because I remember the time when they first used it and how grateful they were to have that machine because it did save some lives. Maybe we don't need it today, but we might need it tomorrow. And if we don't have it, then some people could get hurt. Some people could die because we don't have it. So this is the point that I guess we're trying to make is that, you know, if we had to mess with the, the, the the whole storage issue, you know, we have these vehicles here that are capable of being used, but now that this has become an issue, now we have a possibility of possibly having a need for this machine, hopefully, God pray we don't, but then we also have, you know, other people's lives at risk because we don't have it. So, you know, these are things that we have to think about, and I don't think it would be at this point that, you know, at this point that we hadn't had it big issue about the storage of these vehicles. Commissioner Sir. And Mr. Chair, don't, <clears throat> doesn't the state police normally respond to situations that require uh, SWAT teams and that type of thing? Isn't that normally their responsibility? Sure. Yes. Commissioner Sir. Okay, it's, it, it's not their responsibility. Um, the Michigan State Police works jurisdictions just like we do. They don't, um, they just work for a different team in a different <laughs> jurisdiction. Um, they do have a team, I've talked about this before, and um, it's a fine team, it's an outstanding team, um, but it's a regional response team. And that was the reason back in 2003 why this team was put together. Um, you know, they have a fine team, like I said, but when you call for the Michigan State Police, you're going to wait two hours, maybe three hours, until they arrive on scene. Um, and we can be there ready. I mean, we, we've trained with the Michigan State Police, but it's, it's it, the team was created due to the amount of barricaded gunman complaints that we're having through that year and things were just getting out of hand and um you know there were some online articles and stuff about the team that it was serving the very need that uh, we needed here in the speaking county and that we were looking for. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Marcia. yeah, um normally I would be opposed to uh acquiring military like vehicles, but um given the state of our nation right now and the threat of 
well, what happened on January 6th, the threat of civil war from some people, um, things like that. I think we probably should just keep it. Well, I have yes. a comment on that. Susie. I'm not sure that, Sheriff, you know that there's a uh, state police post in the Stephen Township where there's a mm -hmm. state police there. <laughs> The, yeah, troopers work there. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I'm, they I'm could be here because they're the Not there. Not there. The S team. The S team is a regional response team. Okay. Yeah. I, I still sounded like that we weren't going to get a state trooper right away. And I am no, 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 I'm talking I got, about I got the team. So. No, I, I would like to just say another thing. I remember when I was on the North Shore City Council probably 20 plus years ago, and the fire chief uh, wanted to buy a 100 foot fire truck. Uh, there really weren't any buildings that tall in North Shores, but there were uses for it. And you made a case for it. For example, those Groovers buildings, along those uh, industrial buildings along 31, with a truck like that, you can look, you can reach over the top of the building, like if it catches on fire and shoot down. We did buy the truck, um, and it did get used over the years, not very often, but it was one of those things when you need it, you need it, and uh, I don't think. That point, there was not another one in the county. There is now, uh, so we've got the equipment. It's it's here. It's free. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a bad idea to keep it. Anybody else? It's just uh, does the city of Muskegon have any equipment somewhere? Or just yes. no, no, it's not. Okay, thank you, no. Linda. Um, there's a lot going on here. A lot of you have touched on what I wanted to say. I believe um, someone mentioned something about Grand Rapids. Wasn't there a situation, I think it was Kent County, where their sheriff's SWAT team, ER team, like went into a, a home that was the wrong address and <coughs> demolished the property and had a lawsuit or something, if I remember correctly? Really yeah. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, before I was a commissioner coming up here, uh, addressing this board on the fact that a sheriff with all due just all due respect i'm absolutely in support of law enforcement a sheriff's first and foremost responsibility is a peace officer by statute by constitution i do not believe militarizing our county sheriff's department <clears throat> promotes peace and brings peace offerings um this is something i've addressed you before about de-escalation situations um i would like to see more of that i'm not for militarizing our sheriff's department. Um, I've said that before. I'm totally fully supportive of law enforcement and the statute within the you know um mandates of statutes. So that's Mr. Do I have a comment to follow up. So the idea the fire department has a dangerous job too, and they've made policies, it's called surround and drown. This and so when they have a situation, they no longer go in and do an urban assault on a home, they surround the home and put the fire out from the outside. The same policy could be effective here. If it takes three hours for the SWAT team to arrive, the sheriff department can get the neighbor safely out, surround, contain, and wait for the state police. Right now with the Biden administration deeming that some of these uh, school board meetings are terrorist operations, the last thing that we need is uh, some school board meeting protests being called a terrorist uh, situation. And we activate our ERT team to go disband a bunch of moms at a protest at a school board meeting. I, if that's where we're at, where we're upset by a school board meeting and we need an ERT team, this county is in worse shape than I thought. Kent County is significantly larger than we are. I mean, we've had Black Lives Matter and, and BLM and or, um, Antifa outside this courthouse, ill-equipped. And it's not like these kind of organizations are going to need a military incursion to disband them. They're, this is a fairly peaceful community, and I don't believe we need this equipment, and we certainly don't need a militarized local police department. Okay, let's... No local. Okay, okay, what is the motion? Do you want me to read it again? No, yeah. Okay. Let me read the motion. Um, liquidate Humvee, and you said Mac Pro. He said Max. Max Pro. Pro. Per surplus property disposal policy. Correct. 
Okay, so we're voting to dispose of the Humvee um, and the Max Pro. I wonder if we could, um, can we divide this into each piece of equipment? We already have a motion and a second. We have to vote on that. I, I think that, if I may, yes, you there was talk about the proper process being returning it to the federal government. Is that what the motion is, or is the motion? No, the, the policy directs the administration how to dispose of this equipment. We don't. This motion is to direct our administration to dispose of this per the policy. The policy, the equipment. They will utilize the mechanism that it came from, whether it's the federal government, the city of Grand Rapids. If they want it back, they get it back. If not, it will be disposed of and sold. If Just, the Kent County doesn't want their Humvee back, then it will be sold. So disposed of in accordance with whatever law governs that. Right. Our which policy. is all governed under our policy for disposal of, of unused equipment. I don't know, sitting here without having the benefit of looking at this issue in advance, whether that policy is consistent with um, the laws that and rules that apply to that kind of equipment. So if the county's policy says you can sell it at an auction, that may not be lawful in this circumstance. No, I, can we make the, a the friendly company the the county administration is well familiar with disposal of equipment. I'm not going to argue our county policy. We've gotten rid of oodles of equipment over the years and we've never had a lawsuit filed against the county for illegally disposing of equipment. I think we have a sound administration that has these policies in place, they don't make mistakes. I think they're well adapted at doing this. They know how to dispose of unused equipment. We, if I may, we don't own these pieces of equipment. They're on loan to us. So whatever the procedures are for that, we don't have to follow. They, right, those may not apply. And the fact that the county's disposed of property it owns in the past may not have a bearing on how this property that we don't own. Then they can bring it back to the board for another discussion. They're not, they're going to address legal counsel with the sale of this property. They're not going to do something illegal. They, we have a good administration. Okay. I'd, I'd like to address the other issue. There's two pieces of equipment that includes the Humvee and the Max Pro. What would it take to divide this into two votes? A different motion. <laughs> we have a motion yeah, yeah, second. Vote we have a vote down and then motion. vote them one at a time. Okay. So if this motion <coughs> fails, then I'll make a second motion to divide it and we can vote on each piece of equipment separately. So we're voting now on the original motion. Okay. Commissioner Larry? Yes. Vice Chair Nash? No. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? No. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Sears? Yes. Commissioner Heavy Wright? No. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Chair Skolnick? No. Five yes, four no. Okay. Uh, you put that up under unfinished business. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to new business. Is there any new business? Uh, next item is public comment. Um, is is Anne still on the call? Uh, yes, she is. Okay. Um, Anne Darwin, uh, we couldn't get you connected the first time, or we couldn't hear you, or you weren't there. Are you there now? Is she unmuted? I asked her to unmute. She's unmuted now. Okay, and it appears you're unmuted. Um, Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, gee, praise the Lord. Um, yes, I wanted to comment on exactly what you've been talking about. I am very concerned about these huge vehicles, these monster vehicles, muscle vehicles being in our community, and I don't know that we need them. And the other thing is that um, all the storage fees that we have to uh, pay for these items, um, I don't think that's necessary. Um, I thought the, <laughs> the sheriff's duty is to serve in the court, serve the courts and maintain the jail. Um, I don't know what we're doing with all of these huge pieces of equipment that we don't need. Um, I mean, we've got to pay for maintenance, we've got to pay for storage, we've got to pay for staff and training that uh, may never be needed. 
especially in Muskegon and the reference to January 6th. Come on, Marcia, get, get off of it. Um, our county is a county for the most part, very peaceful and we get along with one another. And just the very thought that we have to have this muscle type equipment in our county is ridiculous. So anyway, I'm glad I finally got in and was able to make a comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ann. You um, have more hands. Next up is Dave Henry. Dave, if you could. Uh, Dave, if you on you. There you go. I did. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to address the commission. Um, I know all of you received an email, email from me recently and this, I'd like to just point out that today is another example of where we have a county board of commissioners who is becoming an operational board. Um, we have folks that work in uh, our local government who are usurped their responsibilities by the board. You have a very competent and capable administrator, but yet every banner, sign, whatever, we want people to bring forth before the commission. If it just doesn't seem to me like that's what this commission's role is. And an, another example is I have different opinions about this equipment, but nonetheless, our county sheriff is our county sheriff. I don't know how many years in law enforcement he's got, but I don't see Commissioner Sear having any law enforcement experience, Commissioner Hughes. Definitely Mr. Laring doesn't. Uh, Commissioner Wilkins, Commissioner Skolnick, none of you have law enforcement background or experience. And I, I, I'm, I'm just gobsmacked that you guys see that this is your responsibility to talk about operational policies and safety for our community. But again, I appreciate the opportunity to address you guys and that's all I have to say. Hey, thank you, Mr. Henry. Um, Nathan Silva, if you can unmute, you'll have two minutes. Uh, yes, thank you, Commissioner Skolnick. Uh, I'm Nathan Silva, Eggleston Township. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the issue of the uh, these military vehicles. Um, I I support uh, Sheriff Poulin and the Muskegon County Sheriff's Department uh, fully in their, their role as peace officers uh, to keep us all, all safe here in Muskegon County. But I was really disturbed to hear, um, to hear about the acquisition of this, uh, this MRAP or uh, yeah, uh, it's an armored uh, military vehicle. And I'm aware that, you know, the, this program has been in existence for a while with uh, the Defense Department distributing this military surplus equipment in communities around our country, but I just, uh, I'm not really comfortable with it because uh, I don't think we want to have a, a militarized police force. I believe that we want our, uh, our county sheriffs to be peace officers that's that's their job is to keep the peace and enforce the law but they're not they're not soldiers so I think this is an issue that needs to be discussed further and uh, you know I support uh, the commissioners and doing their duty and uh, and uh, giving this issue further scrutiny so uh, with that I yield the balance of my time thank you thank you uh, next up is um, a phone number that ends in 323. There's no name. Hi, this is Michelle Mixa, Dalton Township. I just uh, wanted to comment that a couple of things, actually. Um, the first is I wanted to thank the commission for uh, passing this motion. Uh, I was listening to the Commissioner's board meeting when it came to light that this uh, militarized vehicle was had been acquired, and 
it really disturbed me for several days and mostly because the lack of transparency and that corporate counsel had been uh, consulted three times to make sure that it didn't ha come before the board. And I question intention. And that makes me very sad because I support law enforcement fully. Um, I want to think the best of the situation, but when things do not happen in the light, I, it just doesn't settle well. Um, so I think it is the right decision to get rid of these militarized vehicles. I'd also like to say that I think it's absolutely the role of the commissioners to be overseeing the, our county and what's happening within our county. They're elected representatives. And when the people speak, we, they're representing us. And so it's 100% the role of the commissioners to not micromanage, but this is a big deal to think that we have two armored vehicles at the disposal of the sheriff when, when the sheriff's role is a, as a peace officer. So uh, I think the right action was taken today and thank you. Okay, um, next, uh, Michelle Hazekamp. Hey. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear oh, you. Okay, Michelle Hayes Camp, Sullivan County, or Sullivan Township. Um, I agree, there's no reason for Muskegon County to be in possession of this type of military grade hardware. Um, I, I don't know why we would have it other than to use it to give kids rides on or for educational purposes, bring them to the schools. Um, we, we have no reason to have these. Um, now I came in kind of late and I was hearing something about proper disposal. And if proper disposal could be to sell these, <clears throat> you know, my idea is to sell them and take the money and give the department the officers bonuses and buy things that they do need. Um, and that's all I have. I forfeit the rest of my time. Thank you. Okay, that's it for um, public comment. Next up is final. Oh, sorry. Oh, so, yeah, if I may. Um, through these comments, I've been hearing a lot of things about militarization and civilian law enforcement. And really the only ones using the term military or militarization are individuals calling in that kind of don't have the facts for what's happening for this commission itself. Um, that's the last thing I want to see. I've said that before. Um, through a proper administrative oversight, we never had an issue with this in the 12 years that I commanded the SWAT team here in Muskegon County. Um, I agree 100 percent my role is that of, is a civilian law enforcement officer. Of the 11 agencies that work here in Muskegon County, all of us carry that same role. But the fact of the matter is, things have changed. Um, I've heard this commission talk before about you understood the dangers of the job you got into. I started my law enforcement career in 1987, right? 1987, 35 years ago. 1997, right? We see the things that happen in the world and we have to prepare for them. 1997 in North Hollywood, we saw a bank robbery happen where, the, the, where two individuals had more firepower and better body armor than any law enforcement officer in America. And we had to respond to that. It changed the way we responded to calls. Columbine, 1999, changed our response for the way officers arrived for uh, active shooter situations. We don't wait around for a team anymore. If our children are being killed, it is now a single officer entry that's going to go into that place. 2010, we saw a rise in ambushes on police officers, and they're still continuing today. Matter of fact, one was just killed this past week outside his department in another state. You know, we can talk about the need of this equipment. If I never had to use this equipment, that would be the best thing ever, if we never had to use it. I've never had to use my firearm. Is that a piece of equipment I need to lose? Okay, this, you are minimizing and sacrificing the health and safety of our law enforcement community here in Muskegon County. This isn't a sheriff's office operation. It's, a, it's equipment used by, by a multi-jurisdictional team, all right? There's armored equipment uh, in our county that's here to serve a purpose, to help our citizens and to help our officers. That's the same. Um, you know, we can talk about Kent County's equipment being used. Tomorrow marks the 10 year anniversary of the Choice One Bank robbery in Ravana 
where two individuals fled that scene, killed a police officer. Both of those individuals died during this incident, one of them killed by Captain Shane Brown in this department. These things happen in Muskegon County. This idea that we don't need this because we're a civilized community, we are a civilized community, and I applaud the people of this community. But as a law enforcement leader, we need to be ready. We need to be prepared for those things that are happening around the world because they're coming to our door here in Muskegon County, and they already have. I've been a professional law enforcement officer for 35 years, and I've never seen a decision which is going to cause so much harm to our law enforcement community here in Muskegon County. Um, you know, I, I have no intent to make a department multi uh, militarized. I've said that before, and that's not what this is all about. There's a need for the operation that these professionals run, and they need the equipment to do it. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, uh, final board comments. Um, we have um, people online. They're not. They're supposed to address the board chair. And one of the people took a pot shot at, at Commissioner Hovey Wright today. And I think you need to stop that. That's not the first time this has happened. When they're talking, they're not talking to individual board members. They're talking to the board chair. And it needs to stop that they make individual <coughs> mark remarks against the commissioner. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? I, I missed the public comment. And again, we're supposed to address the board chair, not, you know, Q&A back and forth between the sheriff and that or not. But I'm just questioning, um, and this is kind of to the sheriff, but I'll say it to you, I guess. Um, the previous SWAT team was disbanded, correct? So, I mean, we point went how long without it and didn't use it? Point, I mean, point of order. Okay. Um, All right, never mind. That's just my comment. Okay, anybody else? I don't need an answer. Anybody? Okay, uh, that's it for final board comments. Um, we're going to move into item 15. Uh, I'll need a motion to go to closed session. I'll make a motion to go into closed session pursuant to MCL 15 268 C for strategic and negotiation sessions connected with the negotiations of a collective bargaining agreement if either party requests a closed hearing. All right, we have a motion to go into closed session. Vice Chair Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Bram? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Heavy Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Nine yes. Okay, before we get started, I want to make sure that uh, Corporate Council Mike Premier is with us. Yes. He was. He's, he is on the video. And that everybody else is not. There's only me and Mike Comier. And the recording is off too, correct? That I don't know. It says recording. Yeah.
Okay, so you want to make that motion again, Charles? We can do that. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move to approve the tentative agreement negotiated with the FOP Sheriff Deputy Unit pending ratification for the fiscal year 2022 wage reopening. Second. All right, we have a motion that has been supported. Any discussion? If not, roll call. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Steer? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Vice Chair Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Nine yes. Okay. Anybody have another a move to approve the tentative agreement negotiated with the FOP Sheriff Command Unit for the fiscal year 2022 wage bill? Second. Second. All right, we have a motion that's been supported. Is there any discussion on that? If not, I'll roll call on this one. Please. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Vice Chair Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Nine yes. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I think we at the end of the meeting, I will adjourn the meeting. Adjourn. We'll meet out the airport at 4 30, 4 35. Main over. terminal there, or right? Right there's a terminal. Um, you can park.